Google Earth is a powerful geospatial tool. And when combined with AI models like Dado Banana or SeaDream, you can extract, transform, and recreate real spaces. This has a wide range of applications, whether integrating your designs into context or extracting world information to enhance your designs. I'll cover a few useful workflows. Get started, you'll be needing to use Google Earth. Extract images, I'm simply going to use the snipping tool to take screenshots, which works perfectly well. For the first example, I'll be going to London, test real world image annotation. I'll start with a famous building, such as the Shard, which the AI model should recognize. And for the image editing, I use Nano Banana in Google's AI Studio. But this will also work with other models via API, such as SeaDream 4.0. I'll paste in the image and prompt, highlight the shard in the red outline, and add an annotation showing the height in meters. You can highlight the building well enough. Just missed the bottom part. I did add a height of 310 meters. I'll go over to Google to fact check this. Indeed, that is correct. Let's try another famous area. Let's see if the model can guess the building names. I'll take a screenshot around the Gherkin Tower, paste it into AI Studio, and prompt, I'll light the Gherkin in red, and add annotation label showing the name of the building. And yes, it has worked perfectly picking out the correct building. This works because they are famous buildings. So when I've tested it on common unknown buildings, it does get varied results. So then you have to identify them by other features, such as the position in the reference. If you'd even like to stylize the annotations, you can try and use a reference like this one for a specific AR looking style. I've written in the style of location-based AR info app. And it's generated this nice information box, which has a sign colored outline. Although Google Earth is very useful for its 3D context, its render quality is very low, especially when you get up close. This is where AI can help improve this. I'll take this waterside aerial screenshot of New York. It is a great scene, but the image quality is terrible. I'll add this reference to Nano Banana and prompt change this aerial scene to a high fidelity realistic photo during sunset. And just like that, you have a stunning image of New York. You can experiment around with different weather and lighting conditions too. Maybe try an early morning fog scene. Change the aerial scene to a high fidelity realistic photo in early morning with fog. Maybe a bit too much fog, but still an interesting effect. Alternating weather conditions could be useful to show different times of the year. I'll add a snowy scene here. Change this aerial scene into a high fidelity realistic photo for the midday winter in the snow. It has become a complete blizzard. Everything is obscured, so maybe you would have to prompt the model to tone it down a touch. But for changing weather conditions, I found it does better jobs when you get closer up. So I will take a screenshot from a lower angle and put in the same prompt. And now we have a much better output, although looking rather bleak. Sometimes you might need 2D for context and drawings. Extracting clean elevations can be useful in this situation. I'll fly to Amsterdam and take a screenshot of the canal side row of apartments. There are a lot of details in this image, along with boats and water, which we do not need. So back in AI Studio, I will prompt create an architectural elevation from the front row of these buildings in the reference. And it has done a great job at getting all the buildings. I compare it to the original. It has matched the colors in the windows extremely well. They're all in the right order. Let's try and push the AI somewhat. I'll go to Kyoto and try on some low resolution temples to see how it handles them. There are a lot of trees in this image and details are obscured. And then I'll add the same elevation prompt. And now we have four temple elevations. The far left and far right temple roughly matches the reference image, but the center two look very generic. But this might be more useful if you want to produce some diagrams or conceptual infographics. If you want better results, it might be better to focus in on an area and give multiple angles. Creating clean isometric images and even 3D models are possible, especially if you don't want all the surroundings in Carter from Google Earth. Here in Hong Kong, I will take this rather complex looking building and prompt create a clean rendered isometric model 
with no background of the main building in this reference image. Amazing. It's done an excellent job and matches the reference exactly, with no distortion. Let's try another on a tower perhaps. I'll move further up in the scene and select this geometric tower, which has a lot of overlapping shapes in the background. I'll run the same prompt in AI Studio. And once again, it has perfectly removed the background and kept the clean form and details of the building. I've tested this multiple times with even more complicated buildings and each time it does a great job. From here, you can easily take these geometries into Meshi AI or Hanyuan 3D and generate 3D models which can be further processed and used in 3D software. Google Earth can also be a useful tool to make site plans. I'll take a top-down view of one of BIG's famous apartment complexes and set the map to north. Back in AI Studio, I'll prompt, create a simplified architectural CAD line site roof plan drawing around the main buildings in this reference image. And now you can see it has kept to the original building layouts and even the street details when we compare the two. I like that it has even added line weights to emphasize the main buildings compared to the surrounding context. The only issue is that it has kept some of the perspectives on the buildings. So you might have to prompt to make a 2D drawing, not perspective plans, which Nano Banana seems to like to add in sometimes. If you zoom in and focus on one of the buildings, such as this one, you can try and create a ground drawing plan. This will push the AI to do some creative thinking as it doesn't know the interior. Now in this generation, the resolution is rather low, but it has done a decent job with the building's outline shape. And at least for the interior, it has orientated it correctly to outer walls. I would recommend more the previous workflow for creating site plans, as this AI cannot be relied on to make design layouts for us. And finally, one of my favorite workflows is to insert your design into a Google Earth context. This one is a bit tricky, as you not have much control as in painting workflows, but it's good for quick initial tests. I'll take a screenshot of this urban district and simply use a paint tool to scribble in a red zone where I want to add my drawing. I'll paste in the screenshot a building reference. I've kept the building clear of background and distractions. Now I'll prompt paste the reference of this building in the red area facing the main road. And like that, it has blended it into a Google Earth scene, orientated it correctly to the front of the street, and even kept the red plot outline. This is a bit hit and miss, as it's quite hard to describe the exact positions of just words, and sometimes when you draw in the red outline, it doesn't like to follow it. But overall, there is a lot of power in these AI-enhanced Google Earth workflows, so I hope you found them useful and try them out for yourselves.